This question puts the magnetic dipole moment to the forefront. And hopefully you'll see why this makes things a little easier. In this case, we have a circular wire of loop with a current. And because of a magnetic field that's applied, it's gonna spin about a certain axis. It's gonna feel a torque around a certain axis. Let's say that way. When we have a non-rectangular shape, such as this, we can actually approximate this as a bunch of rectangles, something like that. And hopefully you'll see that for this little part here, let's call that length DL being this far away from my axis of rotation, the little torque that it gets will be equal to R cross F. And we've chosen to draw this DL such that it's perpendicular to my R. And so you see that the torque contribution is dependent on this R DL because it depends on the length of the wire that's feeling the force as well as the moment arm that's away. So we are kind of coloring in that little area. And if we carry on through every single line here that looks like that, we'll fill in the entire area. So it works out that no matter what the loop is shaped like, we can make use of this quantity called the magnetic dipole moment. This N here refers to if you have multiple loops. And then you also need the unit vector. The unit vector is defined such that with the right hand rule. So in this case, if the current is going that way, counterclockwise, then my N would come out of the page like that. So in part A, we put this in. Conceivably, they probably only just want the magnitude because they don't tell us how the loop is positioned and they also don't tell us which way the current flows. So here we have a single wire loop. So N is equal to one, I is equal to five amps. Then area is pi R square, of course, given that the radius is 0.1 meters. And the unit for magnetic dipole moment is just as you see, amps meters square. No pretty units there. B. As sort of demonstrated in the last question, the torque can be given by the cross product between this magnetic dipole moment and the magnetic field. You can think of it as, as the coil tilts with respect to the magnetic field, you're gonna decrease your moment arm and so you'll decrease your torque. In any case, without given specific IJK, we can also evaluate cross product using this alternative definition with just the magnitude with a sine theta. The theta being the angle between the two vectors that you are wanting to take the cross product off. And then we can sub in all the numbers. Unit for torque is Newton times meters we can get the torque. Once we have the magnetic dipole moment defined, it's actually quite easy to find the torque on that loop given a specific orientation to the magnetic field. And then for part C, very similar to the electric dipole moment, we can also find or define the potential energy of the loop inside this magnetic field because it would want to align itself. And the statement ends up being quite similar too. It's a dot product with the negative sign, of course. For dot product, again, not using IJK, we can say that the, the dot product is the two magnitude multiplied by cosine theta. And in this case, we'll get, we'll get a negative potential energy. And in this case, we do turn Newton times meters into joule as per convention. Torque, we usually keep as Newton times meter. Energy, we change into joules, but they are dimensionally the same. Just a demonstration of applying these two formulas that were given between the torque, which uses the cross product, and the potential energy, which uses the dot product. And I will refer you to your textbook to look at how these tools were derived so you kind of know where it comes from.